I'm going to show you a couple little tricks about sewing over those really thick, thick uh, denim seams that if you have to, having to hem those up. But let me kind of um, prep this just a little bit. Number one, if I am sewing denim, this is a little thicker, I would want to put a denim needle in, but I'm going to skip that for just a second. But I am going to use the sewing advisor and we're going to pick fabric C, that's the heavy woven, and then our seam, which puts our stitch length at three. Notice that it's a lot longer than just our regular sewing. And I'm going to just sew these two pieces together. And uh, again, a denim needle is going to have a much uh, stronger tip to it. It's not, uh, it's much thicker needle. It's a much uh, sharper point. That's what I'm trying to say. And um, I'm going to just go ahead and stitch this right on through. That's about a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Now, before we actually get to the seam, I'm going to show you a quick little cheat. Okay, so you have in your collection a blind hem foot. That is foot letter D as in dog. And I'm going to show you how you can cheat with this. Now this isn't my, my all-time favorite way to do this, but since you have this, we're going to leave our stitch length at three and we're going to move our needle position to the far, let's see, our far left side here. Watch this. Go to minus 3.5. Your needle's hanging way out over here. I'm going to press my seam to the left on the underneath side and I'm going to guide this blind hem foot. The little toe is going to be on the top and the big toe is on this lower side. So you can see three layers and then one layer because this foot is actually not level at all and this is a great way to kind of do a little top stitching without you having to um, work on guiding it straight. So all I'm doing is kind of peeling this open and then running it right along where those two feet come together. Now the best foot for this is the edge joining foot, one of my favorite feet to actually use. And it has a blade in the middle and then that way it works for everything. But look how much straighter I can sew if I have some type of guide to keep me going with. All right, so that was just kind of like a little side note, little cheat part here. So I'm going to put the needle back in the center. So if I reselect stitch number one, um, I should go back to the center needle position. Oh, it's not. Okay. So we'll go to stitch five, then back to stitch one. Now it will. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn this. So it's once and twice. That is going to be very, very thick. Actually, I'm kind of regretting not putting a denim needle in right now, but we're going to go for it. But what I am going to show you is a tool that is optional. It's the multi-purpose tool from Viking. And you see it's got kind of two thicknesses, a thinner side and a thicker side. This is what's going to get me to go up and over this seam with ease. So, and even too, I might even make that stitch length just a little bit longer. Here's the trick. You want to set the needle to stop in the down position. And as the foot gets closer, see how that foot is kind of like leaning up the mountain? This is where all the little tiny stitches happen, or you push it and you break your needle. So watch this. Take this tool, lift up your presser foot. I'm going to use the thick side and I'm going to bring it underneath the foot. Nope, I'm going to use the thin side. All right, underneath. And what it's going to do is it's going to level out that foot so it keeps me going even when I'm on that uh, top part. It's almost like a plateau before I go off the other side here. And then I can use it to, so I don't get one long stitch coming down the other side. I'm going to sew into this, of course, stopping before I get all the way into my tool. There we go. And then do you notice that I'm stitching from the top side? When they say top stitch, that's what they mean. You're going to get a prettier stitch on the top side than you are on the back side. Let's see how we did here, with even without my... my uh, denim needle. Not bad actually, but what it did is it helped me from having to force it in or help it. The tool kind of made the foot level, kind of leveler, and made it get up and over that thick, thick seam without any trouble. And boy, it really did a nice job. So if you ever look on the back side, if you ever see any stitches that are a little wiggly, then that is um, why we want to sew from the top side. Now I'm going to link over to one of our other popular videos of how to hem jeans without ever removing the stitch 
stitching, you know, on pretty jeans where they have a, a very distinct line of stitching, maybe the edge is already worn, and you don't want to actually remove it. It's a way to take a little tuck and you never see it. It's how they do it in the industry if you ever have jeans hemmed uh, by somebody else professionally. And then you're not having to do as much work as trying to hem something up. So link over there and try, try it out. But this tool is a great tool to have. We use it to put our needles in and out with that hole there. And we can also use it to help sew on buttons and leave a little shank of thread when we're sewing. So not a bad little guy to have um, added to your accessories.